Night. Director Kevin Smith, actress Anna Faris, and from the new movie The Cup, Daniel McPherson. From Hollywood, here's Rove McManus. Note to self, stretch before a show. Thank you very much, welcome on board. Uh, I have to tell you right off the top, I have become a little bit obsessed with the animals here in Los Angeles. Uh, even living in the middle of the city, uh, which I do, don't mean to brag. Uh, <laughs> no box in a paddock for old Rovi. Uh, but uh, in my backyard, uh, it has no, there's no fence, right? So we get every furry animal around, deer, squirrels, raccoons, the Baldwin brothers, they all... <laughs> all come wandering through looking for food, right? Um, I've even seen a coyote, and I know it was a coyote because it had an Acme rocket strapped to its back. <laughs> and uh, this is true, uh, over the past couple of nights, a skunk, totally had a skunk in my backyard. I'd never seen a skunk until I moved here. Cause you don't, you don't get them in Australia, do you, Dan? Never seen a skunk at home. Never seen a skunk. You only get them here in the States and France. <laughs> where they have sex with cats. <laughs> Fact! Yes, because all my source material for American animals in my backyard comes from Looney Tunes cartoons. <laughs> That's why I keep waiting for all the rabbits to dress in drag and kiss a hunter. <laughs> Skunks do stink. Like, and they, when they spray, it's like the most debilitating odour uh, which, when I think about it, that's probably what LA women should keep in their handbags. Instead of those useless chihuahuas, <laughs> put a skunk in there. That'd be awesome. Because not only are they cute, they double as mace. <laughs> like a guy comes up, hey there, sweet cheeks, you looking for a good time? Psh, ah, skunk eye, ah, my eyes stink. Um, <laughs> My eyes stink, did I get that right? Yeah. I missed yeah. you. Uh, and uh, what's interesting is actually some people do keep skunks as pets. And uh, I sadly know this because I looked it up online to see if I could have one, but it's not legal in California. But what they do is they get the scent glands removed, uh, which makes sense because, you know, you don't want a skunk having all the power in the relationship. <laughs> you wake up in the morning and he's, you want me off the bed? I don't think so. <laughs> There's only one thing left to do now, the show! Let's meet our guests! I'm proud of him. Come on, showing it off. He's the director of the new movie Red State. Let's welcome Kevin Smith. His new film is called The Cup. You love him, it's Daniel McPherson. You do love him. Oh, you do. And finally, her new movie is called What's Your Number? It's Anna Ferris. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! yeah! Have you guys... Do you get animals in your backyard? Do you get as excited by them as I do? I've never uh, seen a skunk. Uh, so that got me a little excited when you told the story. Because I was like, that happens in Los Angeles? Now, it's a different kind of skunk that I'm talking about to the one you would probably like in your backyard. <laughs> There's that as well. <laughs> All right, now, through that prism, I've seen a lot of skunks. <laughs> I, took, I took photos of him. And it smells funny. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Is the, this is the little skunk. This is him just nosing around the backyard. I know. Oh, I know. You want him as a pet. <laughs> and look at this next one. Like, he turned around. He looks like Don King in that photo, doesn't he? I think they smell kind of sexy. Have you smelt one before? Yeah, of course. It smells like camp to me. <laughs> Camp, Camp is sexy, you know. <laughs> right yeah. over, right over place. I don't, I've not seen much wildlife. I've seen uh, coyotes once or twice. I saw, my my in-laws saw a deer the other night. I once saw Ian McKellen outside my house. <laughs> <laughs> which was amazing. Like, that is rare wildlife. You see Sir Ian McKellen either here or, like, in New Zealand, and that's it. <laughs> and he was right outside the house, man. I went to feed him, and he ran away. 
I thought you were going to say you went to come out the front of your house and he was like, you shall not die. <laughs> he had a big stick, man. I came out with a hockey stick. I was like, get out of here, you old man. But Dan, people have said to me, oh, it, you shouldn't get excited because it's no different to seeing a kangaroo in your backyard in Australia. But I would get excited by that. If there was a kangaroo in my backyard, I'd get excited too. We nearly, we nearly hit a deer driving down Sunset during the week. What? And that, you know, that shit doesn't happen at home. <laughs> you know? Are you sure it was a deer and not a tranny? <laughs> Because we have lots of those on Sunset, I, I tell you what, I did see Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi cruising down Highland the other day, but Vader had his helmet off and Obi-Wan had his mask off and they were just cruising down like they finished a day's work, you know, really? busking on yeah. Hollywood. And they were just cruising, walking down the street, going, hey, my day was good, how was yours? How was yours? <laughs> <laughs> what? Either that or your, your trip just kicked yeah, in and you had a time. All right, well, it's now time for uh, one of our early parts of the program. But it's called Getting to Know You... There's a jingle. It's like a clarinet quartet or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. good. All right, this is the part of the show where our guests reveal a little nugget of information about themselves that just may blow your tiny minds, or at least make you look up from your Twitter page. Kevin, you're the famous director of Clerks, More Rats and Jersey Girl, but you're also a doctor. Yes. Of? Uh, uh, third base, second base, that kind <laughs> of thing. No, uh, they gave me, uh, when, you, when you do stuff in, in the arts or whatnot, periodically a college will call you up and say, we would like to give you an honorary degree. Can you come speak at the graduation? And the idea is they give you a degree because you've attended the school of life, so to speak, or uh -huh. something. So twice, there have been colleges. One was Illinois Wesleyan, and uh, the other was Montclair in New Jersey that gave me honorary doctorate. So I literally walk around and like, call myself Dr. Smith, like, oh, dear, like I lost this <laughs> Right. But it, it's nice, but it's not earned. I didn't do it for credits or anything. They were just like, you made clerks. Here's a sheepskin, you know. And so, <laughs> what gets you more women? Like being a director or being a doctor? Hey, now. Whoa. Uh, now that I think about it, neither worked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Anna, you're known for the scary movie franchise, of course. And, yes, woo, do it. And the house bunny. <laughs> and you actually hosted your own talk show as a kid. Yeah, I, when I was a child, um, I, I had a... Which is the best time to be a kid, yes, isn't it? Yep, yep. Uh, I had a pretty active imagination. I had all kinds of... I can't believe I'm going to talk about this. Um, all kinds of orthodontal work. And I had this retainer that I imagined talked to me. Oh, this is like one of the big head, the big bracer things. I did have that, but this was a particular retainer that... Uh, you talk funny? It, it sounded like Kit from Knight Rider. Really? Wow. wow. Yep, it gave me all kinds of advice, and I would go <laughs> on imaginary talk shows with my talking retainer, and that's what I was famous for, is like, yes, I'm the girl with the talking retainer. And, yeah, yep, that's... Hey, guys. Right now. Wow. There is, there is a television executive yeah. somewhere at home going... That is a brilliant idea for oh, a show. Yeah. That is a <laughs> yeah. game changer. But you know what? No more talking dogs. Let's put in talking retainers. <laughs> talking retainers. Yeah. Let's get that orthodontal market. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a phrase you don't hear too often. All right, Daniel, we know you're the former star of Neighbours and City Homicide, but what people might be surprised to learn is that you once hosted The X Factor Unconscious. I didn't know this. Yeah, there was... Is there this was... how you got through it? Yeah, it was the only way I survived the very first series. Um, I think it's just started here in the States, isn't it? The X Factor. Mm, yeah, yeah. First time. Um, we did a series in 2006, um, which was an ill-fated version, and it came back again last year and, and has been very successful. But uh, just before we were going on stage, one of the assistant producers backstage decided that he would carry me onto set. And we were filming in a big arena, like a Staples Centre kind of thing. And so he put me over his shoulder and turned around and whacked the side of my head into a concrete pillar and <laughs> knocked me out. And this was about 5.30 and we are going live at, at 7.30. Um, so I was kind of out and all woozy and had this big lump on the side of my head and, and I had to go to hospital and get scans and stuff. And anyway, cut a long story short, I, I don't remember the show. I, got, I left hospital at quarter past seven, was on air at 7.30. Don't remember any of the show and don't remember any of the show the next night, but I did try and send the wrong act home. When, <laughs> I was kind of, it kind of blurring, and I was on the stage, you know, the host just sort of in the auto queue was kind of rolling, and all I could hear was blah, 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 blah. It's blah, like blah. the school teacher and, peanut. Yeah. Exactly. And then silence. Oh, shit, that's me. Um, OK, uh, who's going home? And so I, I didn't hear what she said, so I just basically looked who was next to me and picked one of them, and it was the wrong one. <laughs> 
sent home? Um, no, they all sort of went, oh, you've got the wrong person. Oh, oh no. Sorry. Live telly. <laughs> oh, no. oh, this is insane. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking about weed, pot, reefer, sweet Mary Jane, old Fanny Adams, the, <laughs> the raspberry sherbet, farmer's popsicle. Apparently it's marijuana. OK, I'll stick around for that. Yes. No. I've just been told I'm no longer needed for rehearsal, and as we have stand-ins <laughs> for tonight's guests, um, they've just pointed out who my stand-in is over there. What's going on? <laughs> Rose stand-in for the day. Yeah. The most attractive man in the world. <laughs> well cast, everybody. Well cast. Good to see John Mayer getting some work. It's great. Welcome back. We are here with Anna Farris, Daniel McPherson and Kevin Smith, uh, who uh, you've started already today. You, you start every morning doing a podcast with your wife. You must be a busy man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Podcast with my wife. That's how I start my days. Other guys start their day <laughs> doing other things with their wives. That's not a euphemism. No, nah, uh, me, it's not a euphemism. It literally is a podcast. It's not like we do the podcast every day. <laughs> Uh, we started, I've, I've been doing a lot of podcasts. We got this podcast network called Smodcast.com. And I'd been doing so many, I was doing like almost one a day. Finally, somebody was like, that's like radio. And I was like, oh yeah, let's try it. Let's do radio. And I thought about maybe getting a radio job, but I was like, why work for somebody else, man? We're in the age of the internet where essentially you can get yourself a streaming radio station right from your house. You can wear your PJs, you can sit around, smoke weed while you do the radio. <laughs> and you can pick your own co-host. You don't have to get, you know, go like, hey man, will you hire my wife as well? Boom, I just sit down and start talking to her. So I talked to her for like two hours in the morning and then I talked to Jason Mews, the guy who played Jay to my Silent Bob for two hours. Uh, after that, so about four hours in the morning, and it's fun. It's like talking to my first, wife, my real wife, and my first wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what's more important to you, a uh, morning coffee or a morning bong? I'm a, I'm a total wake and baker man, I, and that's <laughs> and, and very much. I realized at age 38 that I wanted to become a stoner for the rest of my life. I was, <laughs> I was like, look, one day my father died, and I was like, one day I'm going to die too. I might as well enjoy it until then. So I'd built up. I've been working for years, built a little empire with all the movies and stuff, and I said, all right, I'm responsible enough to make the decision to just smoke it all away. But I said to myself, as soon as I start, you start smoking, you're going to get a bunch of people who are like, hey, man, now you're lazy, fat piece of shit, blah, blah. I was getting that before. <laughs> But uh, I didn't want to give him anywhere to attack me, so I said, okay, I'll, I can smoke weed as long as, the moment I start, I do something productive with it. So if you look at me from like, say, 2008 till now, you watch my productivity go through the roof. That's because I smoke so much That's fucking crazy. weed. Yeah. Every, every day I get you, up you, and I have to. Are you stoned now? No, I can't because I have to drive to come here. Ah. And also, like, I could be sharp. You wouldn't even know it if I was stoned. But you know, I don't want to be, I didn't want to come here and be disrespectful and be like, this is pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you've acted stoned because you, you've won yes. a stony award for performing like you were high in a movie. The only award I've ever won. <laughs> I'm incredibly so proud of. So how do you of. act stoned? It was tough, but I, I think that um, yeah, I won this uh, stony award, which is from High Times Magazine, which is like. A the big Bible. bong. So the but award it's, it's is cool. a bong. The yeah, award is a bong. It. It's, and a, it's, a, it's a bong. It's in a, you can a use or a oh, trophy yeah. bong. Yeah. You can so hang on, it. hang on. So you can smoke your award. So it's just a bong, really? <laughs> so, you know, I put it on my mantle and uh, my parents come over and, you know, they're like, oh, honey, we're so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the, the, one of the reasons I bring this up is because in LA, there's a real pot smoking culture. For those who don't know, it's essentially legalized for medicinal reasons. Yeah, yeah. So if you uh, if you have you can't sleep, if mm -hmm. you have any sort of joint pains or something, you can get a card. Anxiety, uh, if you suffer from being Kevin Smith. Uh... <laughs> I was uh, in Venice Beach where most of these dispensaries are based right. and there was a sign out the front of one of them that said if you suffer from any of the following and it had you know, insomnia, joint pain, lack of appetite, like 24 things and then at the bottom it said or anything else. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> the one thing I'll say about down in Venice Beach, when they say, hey man, we can write your doctor's record, they can write your record that gets you into a weed shop where you can buy some weed, but if a cop busts you, that ain't gonna hold. You'll probably go to jail. I know this because right. a friend told me. <laughs> <laughs> 
but it's have so you noticed, different have to you home. Noticed, have it's you so noticed different. it here? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I was never, I was never a big pot smoker. In fact, I wasn't a pot smoker at all. <laughs> yeah. you tell. Um, but, but yeah, it's so different. You know, because parties or, or you know barbecues or meetings or. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Where are you going for your yeah. meeting? Uh, Venice. <laughs> Sick. I've uh, noticed that I've been house. to, like, if you go to a barbecue here, it's, yeah. like, if you were in Australia, if there's people that are smoking it, they do it on the quiet and it's like it's in a back room. Yeah. Here, it gets passed around like dip. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Tahini? No, no, no. Pot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it, uh, like, would you, have you ever worked under the influence, whether it be stoned or drunk or anything like that? <laughs> Me? Yeah, I don't know why I'm looking uh, at anybody. I, actually, I worked with an actor who, who turned up stoned every day, actually, which was, again, it was, it was, there was just something slightly... You've never worked with me before. <laughs> See, she doesn't even remember. Um, but, but, yeah, no, the, no, I've, yeah, okay, I, I, you know, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, are you running for office? Just yeah. fucking say it. Yeah, you know. But for you, Kevin, is it then something that you... Th like, can you perform without it? Is it, is it almost yeah, a crutch for you Yeah, it's not performance enhancing at all. In fact, it, what, it, what it makes you want to do, like most people will tell you, is just kind of relax and whatnot. Because I would say, like, if, you get, if you get paranoia, which can be one of the side effects, especially if you take it all the time, things right. like bad reviews would just be a terrible thing to no, have. No, I've, I've been used to bad reviews since, like, 1995. <laughs> I made this movie <laughs> called Mall Rats, which a lot of people liked, but critics didn't. It came out, and critics shit right in its mouth. So... <laughs> That was the second movie I ever did, and I wasn't smoking weed back then, so I was tempered in raw reviews. And, you know, I, I wish I'd been stoned reading the reviews on Mallrats, because I would be like, fuck this guy, you know. <laughs> but instead, I'd read it and be like, oh, my God, and grab a gun and hold it to my head, you know. Yeah. So it's much easier, I think. For the record, I own two copies of Mallrats. Right on. Yeah, <laughs> sick. I grew up on it. It's out there. I grew up on it. It's out sick. there. All right, well, coming up, we'll show you the best of American cuisine. So get, get hungry. We're going to go there all the time. Become. <laughs> oh, I hate myself. Welcome back. We are having we are having a world of uh, wardrobe issues on set at the moment. Yeah. I'm dealing with a jacket that. Uh, Someone came up to me during the break and said, you need to put your jacket down. You're looking like a doctor. I don't know what right. that means. It means I can write humane letters, perhaps. <laughs> I love doctors. Well, thank you. I love them. I, in fact, I want to introduce you to another doctor. <laughs> I'm out. Hang on, I've heard, of, I've heard of doctors and nurses, but not doctors and doctors. That's creepy. Yeah. That's creepy. That's how and we Kevin's do Kevin's wearing the greatest yeah. pair of shorts. These are not, these are not technically uh, shorts. They're called jorts, jean shorts. Yeah. Uh, some people call them shants, shorts and pants. Every chick sees me and these goes, I shant. <laughs> All right, well, now it's time for three leading questions. Exactly. Uh, we have sort of learnt over the last couple of weeks that we have been maybe going a bit too hard with these. So we're going to ease up and not get too personal this week. Okay. Anna, what's the biggest thing you've ever put in your mouth? Mm. <laughs> oh, that is, uh, so mortifying. I was shooting Scary Movie 2 and there was a scene where I inject, like I put a whole pineapple into my mouth. <laughs> Did you really do that? They had this whole prosthetic gear for me. Wow. I know, I know. Wow. That's so, a claim to fame. Pineapple. Daniel, what's the last thing you stole from a child? Ooh. <sighs> Shit. Um, do you not don't steal, steal that. Children. Two and a half hours of their time on a Sunday night. <laughs> <That's what laughs> and Kevin, have you ever dipped your pickle in chocolate? Yes, of course. <laughs> Well, the reason for tonight's three leading questions is the L.A. County Fair. I went there this week and discovered that it's the largest outdoor fair in the world, filled with some of the largest people in the world. <laughs> it's a place where you can go from culinary to coronary, like... Uh, that. <laughs> what, what are you trying today? The fair special. Uh, you're going to have this with a diet coke? Yes. <laughs> what are you enjoying today? Fried zucchini. What made you choose the deep fried zucchini? Well, we were trying to decide between that and the onion rings, and we thought the zucchini sounded healthier. The deep, the deep fried zucchini is the healthy option. 
I've come to the right place. Are you going to do anything other than eat today? Shop. Eat and shop? Mm -hmm. What about you're not going to go on any of, any of the rides? Oh, no. <laughs> I they go to just Disney get like... in the way of <laughs> eating. <laughs> Why do you think you're one of the biggest nations on earth? Because we eat everything. <laughs> Even the bees are fat in this country. Look at the size of you. What have you been eating? What have you been eating? Is there anything you Americans won't eat? <laughs> Can't think of it, can you? I'm here with uh, one of the vendors today, Chicken Charlie. What have you got on the menu today, Charlie? Well, um, normally people drink Kool-Aid, but today we can eat it. How do you eat Kool-Aid? We fry it. I'm about to eat a deep fried drink. That's right. Yes. Chicken Charlie, here we go. <laughs> oh, wow. Is it good? You minx! <laughs> Is that like the most popular item you have on your menu? It's one of the most popular items. Um, everyone wants all our fried foods. Fried Oreos, fried Twinkies, we fried everything. Wow, so you can have the heart attack that will actually kill you. No, no, no heart attacks. We, the calories are left in the oil. When you fry, all the fat stays in the oil. So when you eat it, it's the healthiest thing for you. Chicken. Uh, fat free, zero calories at Chicken Charlie. Obviously. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I don't mean to sound too forward, ma'am, but may I have a bite of your deep fried Oreo? <laughs> You know the best part? Zero calories. <laughs> do I even want to know what that is? Deep fried watermelon. Just such an American thing to do. You've got one of nature's healthy options being fruit. Let's fry the hell out of it. Have you ever tried to deep fried something on your menu that people have just gone, no? Uh, never. <laughs> what about this? Uh, Sun visor. Boy, it looks like a perfectly healthy sun visor. Yeah, let's just do that. Yeah. Nice. An everyday household kind of iPod. Look at that. I took this off some kid when they weren't looking. Love it. It's just beef. It's just deep fried beef. Yeah. It's... Oh, wow. That looks that, great. That's a good meal. Here's your teddy bear back. <laughs> she loves it, thank you. Are you going to eat something else afterwards? I'm already full, and I'm only at the tip of it. <laughs> this is it. That's it right here. This is chocolate covered bacon. Ready? Wait a minute. <laughs> ah, my mouth has gone schizo. It will come out looking exactly the same. <laughs> Do you seriously have chocolate covered pickles? Oh, f Look at the size of it! I thought it would be like a thing like that! What am I doing? You are a good and kind man. But there is nothing! <laughs> I saved the best for last. I got you here a chicken breast inside of a donut. It's a jelly, a raspberry filled jelly donut as the bread for this delicious chicken breast. Here. Am I really about to do this? <laughs> In the name of cross culture relations. That's right. Here we go. Tastes like a bad idea. <laughs> Why does that work? That should not work. But you add it together, it's genius, it's Chicken genius. Charlie. Thank you very much. And you know the best part? <laughs> Look at this, zero calories. So if you want to enjoy the best in American cuisine, do not come to the LA County Fair. I'm sweating dough! So wrong. So wrong. So impressive. Thank you. How did you feel after that? Like my body was rejecting an organ. It was awful. 
Have you experienced that kind of food before? Like, it seems like it's a, this American tradition to go to a county fair and eat bad food on a stick. Of course. <laughs> of course. It is American, right? Uh, yeah, Come very on. much so. Now, do you have to worry about uh, what you eat? Like, Anna, in your latest movie, What's Your Number, you spend a lot of the movie in either your underwear or naked. <laughs> And I would feel there's a lot of pressure when you're going to be on the big screen. You oh, want to no, keep yourself true. No. <laughs> no pressure at all, Rove. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's awful. It's, it's terrifying. Um, you spend like three months working with 300 crew members, all these big dudes with their microphones and like, you know, the whole deal. And then you have to be in like see through panties in front of them. Oh. It's, it's mortifying. I think. And there's a scene where you're playing uh, strip basketball as yeah, well. So when yeah. they shoot scenes like that, you hear the phrase closed set. Is it really like that? No, it just draws more people in. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as like, you put up the signs, like, oh, closed set. Right, you guys. Oh. Yeah. It's, You've done it, Dan, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Suddenly, like, everybody has a reason you know, to be there. You know the ridiculous underwear they make you wear? The Merkins. So the Merkins. Yeah. So you, you, is, do you guys call that not yeah, so we. Merkins? So the guys have the cock socks. Okay, yeah, which yeah. Are the, which are the, the flesh-coloured, emasculating sock that goes over... Yeah. The junk. Pack, ...the package and... I, I did a sex scene with, with a girl, with, thankfully. Um, okay, so you're on top and then you... What is this? Yeah. You are not bouncing a baby Wait. on your lap. Yeah, it sounds like she's... Hey! This is how we have... And then this is how... Oh! Oh, and you threw up on me. But it's oh. choreographed, right? So I'm there rolling it, and you're going, well, how does my character climax? You know, because I, I don't want people to think this is how I do it, you know? <laughs> That's so weird, I never yeah. thought about yeah. that. It's a good like, point. You're like, I'm saving my cum for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give them a fake what one. What other face would you know what to go with? We go, just well, uh, from all the other guys I've seen, I could you channel this <laughs> face. Just, just make one up. What? Give me one. What? <laughs> it, it would be just go crazy, just, uh, right? Here, here we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is mine. This is mine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hi, 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 hi. Oh, that's okay. That's that good. That's good. That the producer. But this is. You know the best part. None of that will be taken out of context. No, that's no, the best no, part. No, no, no. So anyway, you you see so you there, and so I'm on top, and I'm in, you're into the bit. And I look down, and there is the cock sock next to the B camera. Oh, no. <laughs> mm. And then what do you, you know, and this is not even close up. And I look down, and look, brilliant actress, flaccid cock and balls. <laughs> Hang on, you, your balls can have an erection? <laughs> Imagine flaccid, that, like flaccid just cock. flaccid, and then your and testicles are comma. like ka <laughs> That is a gift. What are you two doing up there? Get back down. Um, there's good naked and bad naked. There is good and naked. And that is bad naked. And flaccid penis thwacking against actress <laughs> is, is not good. But that was, that's my Indian name, flaccid <laughs> penis thwacking against actress. <laughs> but don't pretend you don't love it. Like every, you've done a lot of nude scenes. Yeah. You've done a lot of photo shoots as yeah. well. Check this one out. If this isn't a natural nude pose, <laughs> I don't know what is. Yeah, holy crap. And, Where's my uh, pants? Has anyone said, I'm sorry, kind of, you know, down when, you're, here. when you're with the new girlfriend and you're. Uh, <laughs> oh, can I say that? I probably. I should be careful. Am I allowed yeah. to. Uh, you, am no, I allowed you, to reference. You, you can, actually. Has yeah. Dan got his self a lady? With a picture uh, like that, I don't see how you couldn't get a lady. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so I do have a lady. She's, she's, I've got a few friends in tonight. Really awesome. Zoe! Have you seen. I'm guessing. I'm guessing you've seen. You've seen that before. I might have Googled, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing of growing up on television, you know? I started when I was 17 and all the shit mistakes you make earlier are all on the internet, you know? <laughs> you, life, you've huh? been acting from a, a young age yourself, haven't you, Anna? Yeah. Yeah, from about nine. Um, and I, di I did some early work doing training videos. I did a series of training videos for this, um, for this burger chain called Red Robin. Right. And I was oh. like the... The perfect. <laughs> I was like the perfect hostess, so uh -huh. it's like so they show this to all the employees, right? Mm -hmm. That yeah. that start out, and I was like, so my whole role was like, 
I would do a whole bit where I'm like, thank you for calling Red Robin. We're here for all your entertainment needs. I put the phone down and I say, here at Red Robin, we always give good phone. <laughs> I would, I would like eat that, that burger. That was their corporate speak. No, it shouldn't be. What? Good phone. <laughs> now, did you know you were always going to, to move into the comedy world as, as a performer? Because your career has taken that turn. Oh, um, it's been so weird. Uh, I was a very serious child, and I, think I really was. You laugh, don't laugh. With your retainer. Yeah. With your retainer. Like, this whole program is about how weird I am. Uh, Do you have a face where you wore purple gloves a lot? Yes. I was convinced that someone was going to frame me for murder, so I wore gloves for, like, four months straight until my <laughs> mom was like, those things have become disgusting. You have to take them off. And then I changed to a cape. <laughs> I wish more people could wear capes. Don't you? Yes! I wanted to wear a cape out here today, but Kevin Smith wouldn't let me. Oh, Kevin He insisted Smith. that I wear this weird mermaid dress. <laughs> it's a great mermaid dress. Thank you. All right, well, coming up, good Lord, it's the random question hat. And people who talk funny. Person, uh, you're in your movie The Cup. I was very interested to learn is actually your first feature film. But yeah, first film, man. It was, it was, it was fun. It was, it was scary, and I always put a lot of pressure on myself. But it was, it was fun. It was great. Is there any advice horses. you can give to a first-time film actor, Anna, a young man trying to make it in Hollywood? Yeah. Just do not follow whatever I've done. I, <laughs> <laughs> my parents are so mortified at like. Why? Oh, you know, because I've done like all my movies are kind of offensive. <laughs> And, um, a pineapple in your mouth. I know. Got the stoner do they, do, I know. Do you take your parents to your films, like to the premieres and stuff like that? I do. I do. I have to give them a little bit of wine before <laughs> before we go. I'm like, hey, mom, I think you should go to the bathroom right now. <laughs> right now, go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Uh, because she's, you know, she's really conservative. My mom is the opposite. Really? Yeah, she'd love it. She's like, yeah. she wants you to yeah. have sex. Yeah. Okay. More sex on film. <laughs> And now you're yeah. in LA now, obviously, because yeah. here we are, and, and yeah. doing the audition circuit a little yeah. bit. As an Aussie, do you go in with the Aussie accent, with the American accent? It's it's an interesting one. There's different schools of thought. Um, I've I've got a shit accent. I sound like Greg Norman when I go in and do an American accent, you know. But um, you're so, but Aussies have done so well over here that you kind of want to let them know that you're an Aussie. But then go, oh, but here's my accent. Um, so whereas others go in. I went in for an audition during the week and I was just kind of in the zone and really wanted to nail the accent. So I stayed in it until at the end of the audition. But you walk into a room and there's 30 guys that look exactly the same in blazers and manicured beards. Not that this is manicured, this is totally natural. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, and, and they're all mumbling to themselves and they're all, you know, no one's making eye contact and, and, you know, they're all taller and better looking and musclier and shit. And... and <laughs> And, you know, it's, it's daunting, but it's, it's fun and it's incredible. And you've got the best actors and the best writers and, and, and the best of everything in this town, and it's an inspiring place to be. Well, I think you'll find you'll get by okay because most Americans, as I have discovered, know almost nothing about our accent or our really? culture. And I uh, headed out to uh, Hollywood Boulevard to, uh, just to kind of prove a point. Do you know where I'm from? Take a guess. No, I don't know. I'm going to guess England. London. <laughs> where are you from? New Jersey. Are you really from New Jersey? Not from where the Jersey Shore is. Classy Jersey, thank you very much. Is there such a thing as classy Jersey? Oh my gosh, yes. Hello, you're looking at it. Let's give you a phrase to say. Uh, I'm going to shoot through later the Savo. Uh, How you going, mate? You alright? What? <laughs> Don't go in the water, there's a shark. Oh my god. Don't go in the water, there's a shark. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. No, nah, yeah. No, 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 yeah, no, nah, yeah. It's water. No, 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 it's water. I'm gonna shoot through. I thought you said you gonna shoot somebody. It's water! <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, put an A in there. How's it going? How's it going? That's better. Water! There we go. <laughs> Try this one. Are you taking the piss? Are you taking the piss? <laughs> if I said to you, I'm gonna shoot through to Macca's the Savo, what, what would I be saying? I have no clue. I'm gonna you shoot. Are, you through. want me to remember a full sentence in Australian? Yeah. I can barely speak English. Do you know anything at all about Australia? 
You have wallabies? Don't you have wallabies? We do have wallabies. Yeah, Google that. Do you know what a wallaby is? No. It's like an armadillo, right? What really turned me on about your country was a movie, Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> Disgust me. Kangaroo Jack. There's a Jersey girl that can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I recognize her. We all know each other in Jersey. So I saw her. I was like, it's Pam. <laughs> do you get back to, to Jersey much? You I got do. A comic book I, I go. Store there. I still have a comic book store there. The seat of our government. Uh, my business is there. My offices are still back there. Uh, so I go back uh, fairly regularly. Probably now about every other month. And what about you, Anna? Do you do you make it back to your hometown? Yeah. Uh, my husband and I are both from Northern Seattle area, and <laughs> yeah. Woo! There you go. How is it when you go home for, for what you've done, your success and everything like that? Um, well, I, I was not... Do you have a Walk of Fame star? Believe it or not, mm -hmm. between my talking retainer and the cape, I, I wasn't the most popular <laughs> young lady. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I, I go back, like, we hang out at the, like, the local restaurants, the local bars, um, and it's, it's a little... It's... It's a little odd. I'm always like, hey guys, remember me? And they're like, oh God, that girl. <laughs> so annoying, I can't believe she's back here. <laughs> oh really? Do you think that's jealousy a little bit? No, no, I think it's just because I, no, I, I, you know what, it's just, I think it's the hometown thing. There's always the awkwardness of like, this is how I remembered you. And now like we're sort of trying to get to know each other again as adults, right? There's a little, there's, yeah, yeah. There's definitely, yeah. I think, a little bit of, like, if you do something, particularly if you do something a little high profile, like if you're in movies or something like that, then, then people see what you do. Even if you're not there for 10, 15 years, you go home, everyone knows what you've been doing, but it's not vice versa. Yeah. So right away, that creates a little chasm where they're like, he thinks he's better than us. Where you haven't even opened your mouth yet. Yeah. And they're thinking that you're making a judgment call, and you're like, no, 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 because you don't know as much about them as they, as they seem to know about you based on you being out there a bit more publicly. And is it also from where you're from, like being a Jersey guy? That's something that people hold That helps. That's hold very currency. proud. It, we do, too, but it's currency in the real world. It was, actually, up until, like, the Jersey Shore, but people were... <laughs> it, it was a cool thing to be able to be like, yeah, is that why you sometimes uh, can shun the whole Hollywood system a little bit? Uh, I don't know. I've, I've never really worked within the Hollywood system, so I haven't been able to shun But is that it. intentional? Uh, no, they just won't have me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying. I come to the door. I'm like, look, I'll pick up your laundry. They're like, they're not interested in that kind of thing. I'm more of an outsider from the system. I just watch movies like everybody else. They would never let me make those movies, probably because I couldn't do it, you know. <laughs> uh, I make movies where people are just like, hey, man, let's talk about Star Wars and pussy, you know. <laughs> And you'll never it's a good see mix. It. It's a good mix, it's a good but mix. You'll, it's not where the money is. Spielberg don't make Star yeah. Wars and pussy movies. Are they kind of mu mutually exclusive, though. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, if you like Star Wars, no yeah. pussy. Yeah. Well played. All right. Coming up after the break, the random question hat strikes again. <laughs> Thank you, drummer. Welcome back. It seems that several random questions sent in by our viewers have once again found their way into our much beloved random question hat. Tonight's random question hat has been provided by Paris Hilton. If it wasn't for her daddy, Paris wouldn't have a pot to piss in. But now she has handbags and hats to piss in. Thanks, Paris. Thank you, Paris, indeed. Lovely. Lovely random question. I, went to a, I ended up at a Halloween party at Paris Hilton's house a couple of years ago, and there was this dude dressed as Slash, and I went up and was like, dude, that's the best. Oh, shit, it's Slash. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Paris Hilton's Maybe like, he sent in a random question. Everybody dive in. Pass it around. This is terrifying. It's terrifying. Of course, if you have a random there. question, sorry, Facebook sorry, or tweet it, and it might just end up in our random question hat or in our random question rubbish bin. <laughs> Please read your questions. Anna. Oh dear. <laughs> Looks like it's a good one! <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Oh. Grills. Thank you. Pleasure. You looked. Got your back, baby. Ah, I love it. All right. Why does Bear Grills always drink his own urine? It's a fair question. Have you seen Man vs. Wild? My husband likes it. I 
Well, I like Real Housewives. Is it a urinal? But they, I think they <laughs> keep their own urine. He, as well. he, he drops himself into the middle of nowhere and tries to survive as best he can. Yes. Nine times out of ten, the guy's drinking his own, own urine. urine. Mm. Uh, Dan, oh, sorry, what's yours? Yes. Uh, is it okay to take the newspaper from the office cafeteria into the toilet with you and then put it back onto the cafeteria table when you're done reading it? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Because a man or a woman needs entertainment in that quiet time. Kevin. Okay. Uh, who was the last celebrity you spoke to besides Rove and the other guests? <laughs> mm. um, uh, ben Affleck was the last person I spoke to by email, not by voice, though. Does that count? I think in the modern world it counts like It speaking. does, right? I asked him to give me a quote for a red state because we've been using this quote from Quentin Tarantino said, I fucking love this movie. So uh, it had been up there for a while. So Quentin I said... a lot of thought into that. He yeah. did, a lot of thought into it. Yeah. But also the hell of a way to sell the movie, right? Yeah. So I said, Ben, give us a quote, man, so we can put it up there next to Qu Quentin's. Something is good. And he sends me back a quote that just says, this film has an excellent cast. <laughs> And I wrote back, I was like, can you try harder? Can you, you want an Oscar deeper? for writing? I was like, you want an Oscar for screenwriting. So he sent back a second one and it said, I, I fucking love this movie more than Quentin. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> well, that is all we have time for. So I want to, as always, just... Uh, Red-faced, awkward. Uh, <laughs> I uh, have forgotten to write Mum's postcard again this week. Uh, I write a postcard to my mum to let her know how the show went. And uh, there's a lovely postcard I've chosen this week. I wasn't even aware I'd actually chosen this one. Slightly inappropriate, I would have thought. <laughs> Hello, ladies. So anyway, I'm going to write a postcard to Mum, if that's OK. Away we go. <laughs> Dear Mum, tonight we had Dan McPherson, Anna Farris and Kevin Smith on the show. Kevin Smith was fun. Even though his name makes him sound like some old guy who mows the lawn wearing footy shorts and a Wine Me, Dine Me, 69 Me t-shirt. <laughs> Although I wouldn't mind sampling some of the grass he's been mowing. <laughs> Anna Farris was a delight. She has two N's in her name, yet pronounces it Anna, not Anna. <laughs> I found trying to say it right, a pain in the anus. <laughs> and Dan McPherson, wow. I discovered he needs three cock socks. One for his penis and one for each erect testicle. <laughs> Love, Rose. Send that as we'll send it with your mum's postcard. All right, that's all from us. Would you please thank Anna Farris? What's your number? Out now in the UK, opens October 13 in Australia. Daniel McPherson, the cup, also in theatres around Oz, October 13. And Mr. Kevin Smith, his podcast available on smodcast.com and Red State opens in Australia. You guessed it, October 13. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week. Until then, I'm Rove McManus. Say hi to your mum for me. Good night.